Hello and welcome to Social Media Ministries, where our mission is to use social media to share the living Word of Christ, the Bible, to as many people as possible, again, using social media and also to help them understand and interpret the words or the scriptures in the Bible. My name is Spencer Kaufman, and if this is your first time with us today, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon below the video to be notified when we upload new videos. In addition, please click on the like button as well, and also you can follow us on Facebook at Social Media Ministries. Uh, if this isn't your first time, but you haven't done that, please do so. If not, um, you know, whenever you're ready, that would be greatly appreciated. Today we are talking about serving the Lord in everything you do. Now, we've had a common theme throughout pretty much everything here going on is that in everything you do, you need to commit to the Lord, follow Him, trust Him, and serve Him. Now, pretty much any uh, teacher, leader, pastor, minister that you speak with is going to tell you the same thing. You need to commit to God, follow Him, serve the Lord. So how do you do that? Well, God wants followers who are 100% dedicated. You need to be hot, not lukewarm. Remember, you're not cold. If you're a Christian, you're not cold. Non-believers are cold. Christians are either hot or lukewarm, and Jesus wants you to be hot. You need to be on fire for Christ. So, in order to serve the Lord, you have to be committed. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Why will your plans succeed? Well, because if you're committed to God, your plans and His plans for your life will be one and the same. It's a mindset. You need to develop it and make it your own. This is something that you need to ingrain so deeply within the core of your being that it literally changes everything you are. Now, I know that could be scary, but it's a great thing. Think about being changed by the only God who saves, Jesus Christ. It definitely won't be easy, but nothing good comes easy. You have to work for it every day, all day long, every minute of every day, 24-7, 365. Whatever you do, you must believe that you are working for the Lord. This is a very, very important mindset to develop. It will help you do things that maybe you don't like doing. Someone uh, asks you to do something at work that you really don't want to do. Now, if you don't want to do it because it's wrong, that's a difference. You don't do it. But if you don't want to do it because you don't feel like it, that is where this comes in. Or for example, parents ask their children to take out the trash or do their chores and they don't want to do it, they maybe need to have the mindset that if they're doing it for the Lord, not for their parent. They're doing it for God. God wants them to what? Obey their parents. And if God wants them to obey their parents and part of obeying their parents is taking out the trash or doing their chores, then they're really doing it for God. Now that could be tough for a six-year-old to grasp, but through understanding and knowledge and through good parenting, they will get it and they will understand it and you will raise obedient children. Now, if you go about your day with the mentality that you are working for God, you will be more apt. You will do what is right and you will be less likely to sin. Let's turn to Psalms 2.11. If you have your Bibles, open up Psalm 2.11 because I want you to read, follow along with me. If you don't have your Bible with you, or if you're not in a position to be reading right now, if you're at work or whatever, or driving, uh, don't feel bad, don't feel obligated, but I really would like to encourage you to go home tonight or whenever you get home to open up your Bible, look at the description of this video, and look up each of those references and read these verses and ask God, why they are being brought into your life right now. So here we go, Psalm 211 says, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Okay, what does that mean? Are you supposed to be afraid all the time? No, no. 
It means serve the Lord with fear, as in fear of the Lord. Listen, God is the most powerful thing ever. You might be afraid of the dark, like maybe when you were a kid. <clears throat> maybe you're afraid to tell your boss you screwed up. Maybe you're afraid to, I don't know, run a marathon. Whatever the case may be. Whatever you're afraid of here on earth is nothing. With God, you can do it. Remember, Philippians says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. All right? So you can do it. It doesn't matter. You don't need to be afraid. God's on your side. That's the only thing you need to be afraid of is God. Now, you're not like afraid of God, but you are afraid of going against God. Because if he is with you, no one can be against you. You have the most powerful being ever on your side. You don't need to be afraid. So when you live your life and with the mindset that everything you do, you are doing for God, it's so much easier to follow him, to do things that maybe you don't want to do, and you'll also be a lot less likely to sin. So that's what this is saying. Where did we go here? Psalm 211. It is saying, serve the Lord with fear and then rejoice with trembling. Now that doesn't mean like rejoice in your fear because you're shaking, you're terrified. It means rejoice and tremble like boisterously, like you're just filled with excitement. And why are you rejoicing? Because you serve the Lord. You're rejoicing because he gave you the opportunity to serve him. And now you served him and guess what? There is a blessing. When you serve the Lord and you work hard and you work as if you're doing everything for the Lord with that mindset, you're not working and doing things because you feel like you have to or because you want to or because it'll make someone happy. No, that doesn't matter. What matters is what you're doing for God. So get your mind right. Get your head on straight and do it for the Lord. Because with that frame of mind set to serve your master, then it's going to be very tough for you to sin. Because if sinning disobeys the master that you are so devoted to, then you're not going to want to do that. You're not going to want to sin. Remember, the Lord is your master. He is your God. He is your king, your ruler, everything. And if sinning displeases him, and you don't want to displease him, not because you're afraid, but because you love him and you're committed to him, then you're not going to sin. Yes, of course you will occasionally, because remember the devil is out there like a roaring lion, prowling, looking for someone to devour, and he wants to devour you. But you won't let him. We're going to turn to Matthew 6.24. Matthew is an incredible book, and I really like chapter 6. So if you haven't read it, read it. But right now we're just going to do chapter 6, verse 24. But the whole chapter, that's probably my favorite chapter in the book of Matthew. So here we go, 6, 24. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, <clears throat> or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Then the verse ends with, you cannot serve both God and money. So although this is talking about God and money, meaning you cannot serve both God and money. So if you're working to make money, you're trying to serve money. Whereas if you're working to serve the Lord, and then the Lord is rewarding you with money that you can use in your daily life. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, what's the difference? The difference is your mindset. <clears throat> if it is in your mind to get money, that's wrong. If it is in your mind to serve the Lord and money is a reward, now we are talking. Okay, it, but it's not just your mind. You can't just trick yourself into believing it. You need to believe it in your heart. You need to work to serve God. Now. Forget about the money side of it for a second because that's not the point. We're talking here about working to serve God. So here, you want to work to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He is your master. And if doing something wrong, sinning, displeases your master, you don't want to do that because you want to serve your master. It's just like a dog. If you have a dog and that dog is loyal to you, when they tear up the garbage and you get mad, look at how that dog feels and looks. They're very sad. 
They're disappointed. Not because you yelled at them. They're disappointed because you're disappointed with them. That's how we need to be with God. We need to be sad and disappointed when we sin and we don't ever want to do it again. That's big. It's a mindset. It's hard to develop that. But no one can serve two masters. So if you're serving something here, you're working to make someone happy, you're doing this for your kids or your wife, you need to be doing it for more than them. You need to be doing it for God and then their enjoyment and satisfaction is an earthly benefit. Because remember, you're working for a heavenly kingdom, storing up treasures in heaven, not on earth. If you're working to try to satisfy someone here on earth, that's an earthly treasure. You're trying to bring happiness to an earthly person. Now, I'm not saying don't do things that make other people happy, because making other people happy is one of the greatest things we can do and, and touch their lives because it brings us joy as well. So you have to do that. But your mindset needs to be for the Lord Jesus Christ rather than for someone here on earth. The someone here on earth is temporary. And it's an extra bonus that God blesses us with. Let's go to Colossians 3. 23. It says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So you need to be working for God, not for human masters. This is uh, in a section of the Bible called Rules for Holy Living. 3.23 Also Rules for Christian Households. That's what this chapter and these two sections of this chapter are called. So, if you're a Christian household and you want to live a holy life, this is part of it. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, this version says. Since you know you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. Okay, so there's what the bonus we were talking about. If you're working for God, you will be blessed in more ways than one, and that is coming from the Lord. So you're working for Him and, and He will reward you. This isn't like a slave and a master. This is like you want to work for Him. Slaves work for their masters to avoid punishment or to avoid something else. Good masters, their slaves want to please them. That's what God is. You will want to please Him. Your main goal should be serving the Lord. Yes. Some chores may be painstaking, dull, tiresome. After all, we have to work. The fall of man cursed the ground for us. Men, we have to toil all day long, painstaking labor. Women, your curse is childbirth, pain. You may not want to have a kid to go through that, the pain of the childbirth. But you do, you persevere, you endure, you do it for God who gave you the ability to have that child, and when that child comes, it's a blessing from God. And throughout the life of that child, there is no doubt that that child will bless you many more times through your good parenting and teaching that child obedience and servitude to God. Your main goal in life should be to serve the Lord. We're going to go to Philippians 2, 12-16. That says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and deprived generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. Okay, there's a lot there. 
the main point, so this is a letter of encouragement to the people in Philippi, the Philippians. Mainly what we want to hit on right here is the middle verse, verse 14. Do everything without complaining or arguing. So the Lord Jesus Christ has given you the ability to accomplish things and to do things, to do work. You need to do that work without complaining or without arguing. That's everything. So kids, your parent asks you to take out the trash, to empty the dishwasher, to do whatever chores. Don't argue. Don't grumble. Don't complain. Just do it. Parents, that doesn't mean you can be like a dictator and just all the time tell your kids that they have to do something and say, because I said so. That's not the role of a good parent. God doesn't tell you, do this because I said so. He tells you, do this, and he shows you why through the word and through prayer. You need to be the same with your kids. Show them the reasons behind what you're having them do. Help them understand it, and they will be more than happy to do it. Why? Because it says right here they are to do it without complaining, without arguing. They will want to serve you because ultimately they are working for God. And that is pleasing to God because obedience to their parents is pleasing to the Lord. Why do you do this? So that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and deprived generation. Crooked and depraved generation. Now, although this was written thousands of years ago, 2,000 years ago, doesn't mean that it doesn't still apply today. Look at our world today and tell me honestly that we do not live in a crooked and a depraved world. You can't tell me that. Our world is crooked and depraved, maybe more so now than it was before. But the point is, it's crooked. So, you do everything without complaining or arguing, so you will become blameless and pure children of God in a crooked and depraved world. Why? Why do we want to be blameless and pure in such a crooked world? Why not just join them and be crooked? Well, because then we will shine like stars in the universe as we hold out the word of life. The word of life is the good news of Jesus Christ, that he came and died for this crooked and depraved generation and world. That's the ultimate purpose. We must do everything we can to work for God so that His light shines in us. We will shine like stars. And the people around us is, are going to say, why on earth are you so happy all the time? Why do you always do these things that are horrible, that no one likes doing, but you do them with a smile on your face? Or you do it, and it doesn't seem to bother you. And you'll say, you know what? It bothers me. I don't want to do it. But... I do it because I'm not working for whoever, the horrible boss or, or this. I'm working to serve God and I'm getting blessings because of it. And then you have the opportunity to lead them to Christ and help them develop that mindset. And now we have one more believer in the kingdom of heaven. Pretty cool. So if you work to please God, remember he is the only one you have to impress you work to please him, you will also please whoever you are working for here on earth. So that's a bonus. So if you work to please God, you'll please the people on earth. Don't work to impress the people on earth. Work to please God. Now, why, why am I saying this? And do I have anything to back it up? Of course I do. Look at the story of Joseph. The story of Joseph is, a, a, oh my gosh, that poor guy was sold into slavery by his brothers. Uh, horrible turn of events. He went and he was a slave. He was working hard, not complaining, even though he had not really worked much in his life. And this is chapter 39 in Genesis, by the way, the story of Joseph. Read it, watch a movie, whatever. But definitely read the Bible on the story. Basically, Joseph was taken to Potiphar. He started working. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. 
Potiphar put him in charge of his household and entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. Those around you will be blessed because of you. Why? Because you're working hard. Joseph didn't want to be a slave. Are you kidding me? He didn't want to work in, in the Egyptians. He was a Hebrew. He was taken to a foreign land, the land of people that don't believe in his God, like the opposite. He was taken away. He doesn't want to be there. But he worked hard and worked for God, and all those around him were blessed. And Potiphar, it says in there, he saw that he was blessed by the Lord. Potiphar knew who his God was. Potiphar didn't say, oh, my Egyptian gods are blessing you. He said, no, he sees that Joseph had something different. He was a light shining like stars in the universe. And everybody around him was blessed. Now, later on, yes, some bad things happened. Joseph was put into temptation and sinned, or tried to sin. He didn't sin, though. He was tried to be led astray. The devil was prowling and roaring like a lion to get him astray. Joseph held fast. As a result, Joseph ended up going to prison for something he didn't do. But while he was there, there was a plan and a purpose. He was still serving the Lord. And the prison guard, the warden, trusted everything to Joseph. And everything there was blessed. There weren't any problems. Joseph didn't want to be in prison. Are you kidding me? But he worked for the Lord, and the Lord blessed him. Everything you do, serve the Lord. And you and those around you will be blessed. It's happened before. It'll happen to you. Why? Because God doesn't change. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for these great words today, these words of encouragement. Allow them to fill our hearts and our minds. Give us the uh, ability to change our core being and develop this mindset that every single thing we do, we need to be doing for you. Touch the hearts of our parents, our children, our friends, our family and allow them to be the same. Allow us to shine like stars in the universe, to influence those around us. Give the other people around us the um, curiosity to ask what is going on with these people and ask us and then give us the courage and the words to tell them exactly what is going on, that we are filled with the light of Jesus Christ and that we want to share it with them and allow them to be willing and able to accept it. And through all of this, Lord, allow us to vastly grow your kingdom. Give us the hearts of servants to be willing and able to do everything without complaining and without arguing. And Lord, we know that that means you're going to give us some tasks we don't like, but please allow us to persevere, to continue to seek you. And when we do, Lord, we ask for a great blessing. I pray a blessing on each and every one of these people, Lord, that when they follow, just like Joseph did, when they do these things that they didn't want to do, that they are doing them in servitude to you, that you would richly bless them and bless those around them, just like you did with the Egyptian and with the prison guard. You blessed all those around Joseph, and they saw what was in Joseph. Allow others around us to see what is in us, the light that you have given us and that you would bless our households and those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. I really want to thank you for giving us your time today. I know time is valuable. Please, if you find it in your heart, subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon, use the share buttons to help us fulfill the mission of sharing the Word of God through social media with everybody possible. Social media is very vast. There are a lot of platforms. Share it on every one you can. Thank you.